Hello everybody, I'm again next to CFM 56-5B which belongs to A320. We are under the C duct and today I would like to show you how looks IP valve, uh, what is it good for and how to replace it. So let's take a look at it. IP valve is part of engine bleed system. What is engine bleed system good for? Basically, it supplies airplane systems with the compressed air from the engine uh, high pressure compressor. We are taking the air from the ninth stage, which is actually the last stage of the high pressure compressor. We have three connections. One is over there, second one is the here, and the third one is all the way on the other side. Uh, then we have here high pressure valve. The air from the ninth stage is uh, mostly used uh, on the ground during uh, idle operation. Uh, in that, at that time, engine or engine compressor, high pressure compressor, doesn't have enough power to compress air that much that we can use the fourth stage. The, from the air from the fourth stage we are using during cruise or during takeoff, during high engine operations. So once uh, we are going above uh, idle or uh, there is no high demand this valve will close it is electrically controlled pneumatically operated and once as i said we don't need uh, there is no high demand or fourth stage has enough power to provide uh, compressed air uh, to the airplane systems this valve will gonna close and we we're gonna use uh, air from the fourth stage but now we are getting to the point, what is uh, IP check valve good for? But that I'll tell you during the removal. As a first, we need to remove uh, two rods, which uh, fix the duct on the position. Uh, so we will have a bit of movement. Can I start getting your notice? Yes, you can, of course. And now the one on the top. Okay. So now we're all gonna remove the clamps from the check valve. And inside we can find e seal. But I will show you in a bit once we get it out. Good. So one. And the other one. Yeah, we need a plastic hammer. That's one. Now, bottom one. Perfect. So, the both clips are out. So, finally when the clamps are out, we can start to remove the bolts from the rods. <coughs> because of constant expansion and uh, shrinking of the materials, uh, sometimes the bolt can get stuck. So, that's why we apply a bit of uh, fluid which releases it. And now I'll remove the bottom one. And yeah, then finally we can remove the IP valve. Bottom one. Yes. Cool. So now it should 
to move at least a bit because both uh, arms are out. And now we should be able to get it out. Yes, it's out. Perfect. So this this is our IP valve. Basically, it's a very simple butterfly valve. So one-way valve. Uh, once the high pressure valve is in operation uh, and to avoid uh, reverse flow this valve is installed over here and it actually prevent that reverse flow so this is closed thanks to pressure it holds on the position and the uh, air from the high pressure valve can get inside of the airplane and once we we're gonna use uh, pressure from the fourth stage the high pressure valve will gonna close uh, which will release the pressure from the duct and from that point we can start to supply the air from the fourth stage this butterfly valve will open and yeah the air can nicely enter inside of the aircraft systems it is that easy here you can see uh, the new one and old valve side by side and why we are replacing this one here you can see the plate uh, and it is a bit uh, out of the limit slightly, but it is out of the limit, so we need to replace it. It should be like this. There is almost no movement. There is a certain limit for the play, and this one over exceeded slightly. So and the... let's install the new one. Important, of course, uh, is uh, to be sure uh, which way the flow goes. Yeah, so this is how it opens. So you need to sit like that. But you have also cut out over here. Uh, that one sits on the, let's say, uh, notch, which is on this side. So basically, uh, you cannot make a mistake with that. So we'll slide it in. I before checked the, I already checked both, uh, both e seals. You see, it sits on the place. And thanks to that, you know that it's exactly in the position. Okay, let's install the clamps, which both of them has special uh, or exact place where it need to be installed. So again, it sits on the bottom. That's one. Another one. Perfect. Both of them are in the place, so we can start with the dark procedure. So first, we'll lightly tie them. one the other one I need to hit them with a the plastic hammer so we're gonna those sits on the right place we need to repeat this procedure until they're not gonna be a movement so a few more times is done now the rods 
Takže to môže. Mám ho poznať niekde? Nepoznám. But let's see what will be the temperature. Very good. Developer on the leak. So, developer is applied. Now we need to let it dry and we can go for it. Okay, uh, since developer is dry, uh, we can close the sea duct and we'll push airplane out and then pan up. We are finally on apron, which means that we can start the engine. Once we reach the idle, we will switch off the APU bleed because APU bleed has always priority. And from that point, we will wake up the engine bleed. So engine bleed valve will gonna open. And since intermediate pressure or IP pressure is not sufficient, high pressure bleed valve will gonna open to supply the bleed line. And anyway, this is sufficient to perform leak check on both sides of the IP valve since the pressure is coming from the fifth stage and the pressure on the other side is provided by ninth stage. And by the way, I need to apologize for my voice, but I got sick and this is best what I can do. After five minutes, we switch on the APU bleed and we switch off the engine. And then we move outside to perform the leak check on the IP valve. And since everything looks fine, we can close the sea duct. That's all about uh, engine IP valve. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below and I will be more than happy to answer to you. Big thanks to Austrian Alliance that they let me to record all those videos so you can see behind the scene of aircraft maintenance. Uh, as always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for a maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš. This was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto and I will see you next video. Bye.